Meet the R1T. It's an all-electric mid-size pickup truck manufactured by startup automaker Rivian. Now, thanks to its beautiful exterior styling, incredible capability, and thoughtful technology, in my not-so-humble opinion, this is one of the hottest EVs you can drive right now. But today, I'm gonna be taking this thing for a quick spin to actually burn off some range from the battery pack because we're gonna be doing an EV Pulse charging challenge test to see how long it takes to recharge the R1T's battery. So come on, let's go for a drive. On the highway now, I-75 South, and of course I've got to burn off some energy from the battery pack before we do our charging challenge test. And we started at right about 34%, so got a ways to go right now. But anyway, the Rivian R1T is offered in several different flavors. This happens to be the quad motor all-wheel drive variant, which is the top powertrain that's offered. And it's got 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque. Staggering numbers that are enough to get this vehicle from zero to 60 in a Rivian estimated three seconds flat. Incredible performance. Now, I will say in normal driving, it has plenty of torque. It accelerates very quickly. But when you jump on the accelerator, when you nail it, it doesn't feel quite as fast as the number would suggest. If you don't want to spend as much as it would take to get a quad motor model, two other variants are offered. There's a base dual motor variant with all-wheel drive and then a performance dual motor all-wheel drive model. So really you get three different flavors of R1T. At least for the time being, this top shelf version of the R1T is only available with the mid-sized battery pack. A smaller one is offered and a larger one as well, but as it sits, we have the mid-range battery, which gets us an EPA estimated 274 miles of range, which is certainly a good figure, though of course we always do like to see at least 300. As I mentioned, the acceleration in this vehicle is absolutely effortless. It has no trouble getting up to speed in any situation. You just roll on the accelerator and boom, you are gone. The steering though, it's fine. I have nothing to complain about there. I'm going to change lanes here because we've got some traffic merging onto the highway here. Of course, we do have an adjustable air suspension system that has a couple different settings. So I click down here. There's soft or stiff. Right now it's in soft, which delivers a pretty good ride, though stiff makes it noticeably starchier. So my preference, of course, is always to have a smooth ride, so I leave it in soft. This R1T features the beautiful forest green paint. It also rides on 20-inch wheels that are offered in the all-terrain upgrade package. That also includes underbody shielding and, of course, all-terrain tires, so you can really go crazy out on the trails if you want to, of course. But I will say the refinement with these tires is still pretty good. The interior remains relatively quiet. The ride is quite good when you have the air suspension in the soft setting. And overall, it's a very livable vehicle. Really, the only complaint I have refinement-wise is I hear a little bit of wind whistling somewhere around the window seal here. I can't tell if it's the A-pillar or further up top, but there is just a tiny hint of wind noise. And that Camaro was cooking. <laughs> Drive like your kids live here, you know? <laughs> they live in the median, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that adjustable air suspension system gives you up to 14.9 inches of ground clearance when properly equipped, which is a crazy number. It also allows you to drive the R1T through more than 43 inches of water, which is just incredible. Now, I did mention a moment ago the forest green paint job, which looks quite nice, but this vehicle is also available with a number of other interesting colors. They've got a surprisingly bold palette that includes a blue, a red, and even an orange if you're feeling really adventurous. Numerous interior themes are offered as well, and what we've got here is called Forest Edge with Warm Ash, a very open pour wood trim. It almost feels rough to the touch is what you get, though it does look very good in this vehicle. Additionally, the overall design of the interior, it's gorgeous. It's very understated. It's clean. It's functional. I really like this cab, and I think Rivian did a fantastic job. Really. Overall, it's just beautiful. 
Of course, we also have integrated displays. There's a very large 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and then a gorgeous 15.6 inch touch panel here on the center of the dashboard. And the infotainment system that runs on here works beautifully. It is one of the fastest and most responsive multimedia arrays I have ever experienced in a vehicle. It responds basically immediately, but that's not all. The system also looks beautiful, it's very understated, and it's super easy to use. So really, there's nothing to complain about, except perhaps for one thing, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are not supported, at least at this time. So if you want smartphone mirroring, Rivian doesn't give you that. So the R1T is built on the Rivian platform, which incorporates aluminum, high strength steel, and even a bit of carbon fiber. So that should provide an incredibly rigid foundation. And indeed this vehicle feels super stiff. It also gives you a top safety pick plus rating from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, which is the highest rating that the organization hands out. The aptly named Driver Plus suite of aids should be standard on every R1T, and this includes a whole host of features like adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, automatic high beams, and a lot more. Enabling all of those features are basically more sensors than a science lab, and I'm not kidding. There are 10 exterior cameras, four corner radar units, one forward facing radar, and then 12 ultrasonic sensors. That's that's crazy. You could practically fly an Airbus with this technology. Of course, I'm still burning off range, and right now we're at about a 23% state of charge with roughly 67 miles left to go, so a little bit more driving to take care of that. But when we do get to the DC fast charger, I'm expecting to see this truck peak north of 200 kilowatts, but of course we won't know until we get there. We plug into a 350 kilowatt charger and we better not see a Chevy Bolt hooked up. I will lose my proverbial stuff if that's the case. Get out. You don't belong there, Chevy Bolt. Before we continue, let's take a break to explain how we conduct our EV Pulse charging challenge and please skip ahead if you don't care about the details. First, we deplete a vehicle's battery to between 5 and 10%. We do this by driving on the highway for at least 30 minutes to make sure the battery pack is warm. We then plug into a DC fast charger that delivers at least as many kilowatts of juice as the vehicle can accept, so the charger is not the limiting factor. We then monitor the progress all the way to 100%, so afterwards we can analyze the full charging curve. A few additional notes, in normal use you only want a DC fast charge to about 80%, after that, the charging rate dramatically decreases, meaning the last 20% often takes way longer to get, so be aware. DC fast charging is also best used on road trips. If you own an EV, most of the time you'll want to juice up at home using a slower but more convenient level 2 charger. And finally, weather conditions can be a big factor as batteries don't absorb energy as quickly in the cold. During testing in Roseville, Michigan, the conditions were partly cloudy but dry, with temps in the upper 60s. Fahrenheit, of course. All right, we've got about 12% left in the battery pack right now, so we're getting very close to our targeted range for doing our EV Pulse Charging Challenge test. And in the meantime, I had Ben pull up the Electrify America app on his phone, and there's a little bit of news. The station we're going to has four different cabinets, four different chargers. One of them is broken, no surprise there, <laughs> and the other three are occupied. So hopefully by the time we get there, that's not an issue, but we'll have to see. It's always a roll of the dice when you're getting low on battery power. Those are some wheels. Holy crap, those are probably worth more than the Suburban. I don't know why you would want those. The ride has got to be terrible. Look how Look how tiny the tire is. It's like a rubber band. No thanks, not for me. I'm a little too pragmatic for that sort of vehicle modification. See, I'd much prefer a car with wicker seats. It's just very classic. We're at a 5% state of charge right now, about 15 miles to empty, so I reckon it's time we plug in to a DC fast charger with at least 350 kilowatts of juice. So we're gonna pull into the lot here. 
uh, up by the Cracker Barrel, everybody's favorite store that is mandated to be built near an interstate. I don't know that I've ever seen a Cracker Barrel not within like 15 feet of a highway. But we're going to pull in and we're going to see if a Chevy Bolt is plugged into the 350 kilowatt unit. Because, you know, that's probably what's going to happen. Because F you very much. Since the Bolt only charges at, what, 55 kilowatts? But anyway, we're here. We'll do a run through here past the superchargers because those ones, you know, actually work. I think I'm going to cheat my way through here. And we've got, oh, two Chevy Bolts, of course, plugged into the DC fast chargers. While parked and waiting for one of the 350 kilowatt chargers to open, a friendly BMW owner informed us that one of the chargers at this location was broken and that only one of the remaining three delivered anywhere near its advertised output. Disappointing, but not at all surprising news. Once the operational 350 kilowatt stall was free, we plugged in and got started. Overall, this Rivian took a leisurely one hour and 32 minutes to go from 4% to 100%. This truck's mid-size battery pack clocks in at a gargantuan 135 kilowatt hours. That's more than you can get in the full-size Ford F-150 Lightning. As for the all-important 10 to 80% figure, that took a much more reasonable 45 minutes to achieve. Of course, since we went to 100, the R1T required an additional 47 minutes to get the last 20%, which is why it always makes the most sense to stop at 80. As for the charging rate, this truck peaked at an impressive 213 kilowatts, which occurred 15 minutes into the session with the battery at a 32% state of charge. Looking at the overall curve, it was quite consistent. The rate hit 200 kilowatts at about three minutes and stayed north of that for roughly 13 additional minutes. After this, the rate steadily decreased with a few small hiccups along the way. When the battery hit 51%, the charging rate dipped slightly to 123 kilowatts, but then shot up to 147 a couple minutes later. And this was one of the more noticeable bumps in the curve. At the end of our test, which again lasted 92 minutes, the Rivian R1T had absorbed 133.7 kilowatt hours of succulent electricity at a cost of 48 cents per kilowatt hour. All told, we paid $63.83 for this charging session. Overall, the Rivian R1T is an exceptionally good EV, far better than you'd probably ever expect from a startup automaker. This electric truck is tasteful and well-engineered. It looks great, is nice to drive, and has a beautiful interior. Really, the only problem is all that excellence costs you. <laughs> a lot. As it sits, our tester checks out for around $96,400, including $1,800 in destination fees. At nearly six figures, this pickup better be good, and fortunately it is. Next, click right over here to check out my R1T technology feature where I highlight some of the ingenious features this pickup truck offers and there's a lot to talk about. 